Atheist Nomads, episode 310. What's up with the Exmos? The podcast you're about to listen to includes cursing and talking about hoo haws. Please be advised. Welcome to another episode of Atheist Nomads. I am Dustin, and joining me is Aaron. Hello. And in a little bit, we'll have Crystal Moore with us after the break, and we're going to talk about Exmos, <laughs> which we did several weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> which was great. Yeah, yeah. Loved uh, it. We're on vacation right now, so this is a, well, Aaron's... Do, 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 do. I'm not on vacation. Getting a break from the show, <laughs> yeah. but Lauren and I and, and Kylie and the dogs are We're uh, roaming the... Oregon. As uh, as of release, we are... So when this drops, we're, we'll be sleeping in Fort at Fort Stevens State Park um, near Astoria. Fun! Uh, it's fun to be in the future here. I wonder what mm-hmm. I'm doing. What, what date is that? That will be July... Two. Oh, hey, I'm I'm gonna the be the morning in a, of July two. Yeah, I'm gonna be <laughs> that night. I'm gonna be in a van mm. <laughs> in the park recording another podcast. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's what I'm doing on July two. Plus, I'll also be doing an open mic. Yay! Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's let's cover a little bit of news. And these are stories I've been saving up for mm. for covering for special occasions, or we just ran out of time and didn't <laughs> get to them. Uh, a pastor. Got in trouble. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. Um, Dr. William Weaver, the Reverend Dr. William <laughs> Weaver, Presbyterian minister. Okay. So we're, we're starting know, not out. too bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, he got fired for using a combination, and by fired more accurately, he retired. Oh, okay, because yeah. Because of following the Bible using Native American rituals to remove demons from troubled church members. Oh, interesting. So he, like, put in another religion. So you want to guess how he did this? Yeah, let's... I don't I don't know. So he'd get these men coming to him for counseling, and he would find out what's... Try Ailing to figure them. out what's wrong with them yeah. and figure out it's demons. So take them upstairs, light some candles... Have the man lay down on the bed, that remove his real pants, romantic. and tr- attempt to suck the demons out of the man's penis. Oh, d- is that what he called Native American rituals? Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh, geez. Candles I and cock sucking. Right. I was like, this sounds real romantic. What is happening right now? Oh my gosh. That, and then I bet you he used it against them so that they wouldn't <laughs> say anything. No, p- people did finally say something. Uh, at Probably because th- they felt uncomfortable. Three men eventually came forward, and it this went through a internal church trial. Uh huh. None of them went to the police. Right. Which none, is lucky for that guy. None of them knew what was going to be going on, basically until his mouth was on their cocks. Oh gosh. Right. Well, and then they're very, they're religious, right? And mm-hmm. probably do not identify as being gay. And so they were probably real embarrassed and it probably took them a while to come out with this. Yeah. Yeah. And when, when you're, you're going through pastoral counseling, that means you have something wrong enough that you're wanting to get help from somebody who knows everybody in your community. Right. Right. But you're going to that person for help. Yeah. I will tell you pastoral counseling, not as good as real counseling. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, for one, your real counselor is not somebody you're going to see every single week outside of counseling. Yes, exactly. You're not going to have like church picnics with them. Yeah. (laughs) Stuff. Yeah. There's going to be separation Mm -hmm. and yeah, that, but yeah, church, internal church trial. Oh, goodness. And since they could have fired him, um, he decided and said to quit. But considering he's 69 years old, oh. what you call a 69-year-old quitting their job is retirement. retirement. Yeah. Do you think he got retirement benefits? <laughs> I actually want to know. It's a nonprofit. I mean, they still run it like a business. Oh, it gosh. Would- it would depend on whether they're doing 4013Bs mm. or if they're doing uh, a private pension. Yeah. Um, a lot of churches still do pensions where they 
just continue to pay your salary forever? Oh, I, I, I bet they're like, no. <laughs> and he moved to a gated retirement community. Oh, uh, I have a 401.3B. Uh-huh. I do as well. It's nice. <laughs> it's no different than a 401k. No, it's not. It just happens to be a nonprofit. Yeah. A Lego fan was at a convention <laughs> in New Zealand. Very happy to show his biblical Lego creations. This was a devout Christian who was wanting to sh use Legos to portray Bible stories okay. to help spread Christianity at this convention. Okay. They were removed from display with the decision being that they are unsafe for children's eyes because of the sex and violence. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I mean, he was just being realistic, right? Abraham getting ready to sacrifice Isaac. Oh, my gosh. Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, naked. Yeah. David chopping off Goliath's head, complete with a pool of blood where Goliath's head used to be and blood dripping down from oh. the head. Oh, goodness. Yeah, yeah. So my wonder is, though, uh, what are the other Lego displays like? Not this graphic? I mean, because I could see other things being pretty graphic, too, if we're at a Lego convention. But if... if, if the, I want to know what... Because, uh, you know, when you submit something... You're supposed to follow guidelines and rules. Mm -hmm. I wonder what they were. I'm just playing uh, both sides <laughs> here. I mean, I kind of think that's cool. Of course, you're going to get some people come going to Christianity, especially little boys who are like, hell yeah, or girls, whatever. There's blood. I mean, I hear the Old Testament's pretty, yeah. pretty cool. So I, I don't know what, <laughs> yeah, what other no, displays right. were present, just yeah. what that one was. I mean, that sounds pretty graphic, and I totally understand. But on the other hand, on the opposite end, like, what were the other displays like, and were there none, guidelines? None were that graphic. Yeah, yeah. Blood dripping that and children know. getting sacrificed. Right. Is, that kind of goes beyond the right. pale. So when I first read the title, because of course I did not read the article, all I could think <laughs> of was like, oh, that seems interesting. Maybe they had, like, Noah's Ark, you know? None, mm -hmm. I didn't realize it was, like, naked people, which also makes me laugh thinking about naked Legos. Because you know what their heads look like, uh -huh. right? Like in their little cup hands, their little sea hands. <laughs> Eve's breasts do not look real. <laughs> no, Let's right? put it that yeah. way. <laughs> oh, naked Legos. That just makes me laugh. <laughs> so we, India seems to be coming up more often than it used to. And uh, in the most recent one we have from India, it's pretty well known at this point that the caste system has been officially abolished that hasn't changed anything no of course not like the government says oh we don't have a caste system anymore mm -hmm. but that's not true it's ingrained and especially when you get out into rural areas mm -hmm. it hasn't changed anything right so oh and the the act meant to stop it was called the Scheduled Castes and Scheduled Tribes Prevention of Atrocities Act. That's an interesting title. Uh-huh. Well, a Dalit man, um, Dalit being the term, the more proper term for somebody from the untouchable lowest cla uh, mm -hmm. caste, had the audacity of eating food at a wedding reception where the couple were also Dalit, had the audacity of eating food in front of higher caste men who beat him to death over it. What? Oh my gosh. Uh, that's ridiculous. That's crazy. 21 years old. He died nine days later. Oh my gosh. Are they being prosecuted? The incident's been filed, at least. The mm -hmm. police have been involved. Uh, I... You don't know. <laughs> you don't know. That's all right. The article does not say anything about any prosecution. Yeah. Well, probably because it's still pretty hard. 
because there still is a caste system. Right. Uh, here's the thing. I always thought it was interesting that the untouchables were like the lower because when we think of untouchables here in America, that'd be the 1%. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, you're they're right. they're untouchable. <laughs> There's even a movie called The Untouchables. Exactly. About the people that are so good you can't touch them. Right, Yeah. right. Like no, nothing happens to them. Yeah, they can untouchable do does mean the best, the greatest, the highest right, here. here. Here, yes. Yeah, but and then in India, it means that literally people won't touch them. Right. And so the village they're in has... About 50 families, uh, 11 or 12 year Dalit. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, this young man was the still living at home with his his mom and siblings and the only one making money in the house. Oh, no. I mean, so did the couple not eat in front of these men? <laughs> I, I know. Yeah, I you know. don't know, right? It's It's a weird, I mean, like. Just thinking about the pieces and parts of it, and and it's like, well, how did these men actually get invited? Uh, what? Why were they around? What were they doing at this yes, wedding exactly. where Dalits are going to be eating? Yeah, uh, and it, maybe it's like, oh, he was specifically sitting at the table. He was seated. <laughs> yeah, it would have been less of a problem if he'd been standing eating in front of them, but he was seated, right. seated, and eating in front of them. Right. Like when I think wedding, I think like tables all mm -hmm. over. It's like. Uh, <laughs> right. I mean, I'm not trying to blame the victim at all, but, but it's just like, I don't understand how all of these people were, I mean, there's got to be more people eating in front of them, but I would assume it's because he was sitting at their table or in their eye line in their yeah. eyesight or whatever. Ridiculous. Yeah. And, uh, hundreds of guests present. Not a single one would go on the record to describe what happened. Of course not, because they're afraid. Yep. They will admit that they were there and that he did die after the event, but that's it. Right. Activist and author Mary Colbert went on the Jim Baker show. Jim Baker being a fun, apocalyptic prophet broadcaster. Uh to talk about climate change and how it's being used by Satan to distract people. How the end times are fast approaching. They're nigh. <laughs> and she said, and I quote, The devil knows what is in the word of God. I truly believe that because he knows what the word says, that towards the end times, earthquake, tornadoes, storms, all these things are going to happen as the birth pangs of the return of Christ. Now the enemy is trying to change that narrative for the mindset of the people that this has to do with climate change so that they can believe it's something outside of their control that is happening. <laughs> and that people need to repent of their sins to stop these disasters. Oh man, this harkens back to that person who said that the state wasn't praying enough and that's why there were all those tornadoes or whatever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's because people were evil. Right. If, if you take Prayer out of schools, you're going to get more tornadoes in Oklahoma. Right. If gay people can get married in California, New Orleans is going to get flooded by a hurricane. I don't see the logic, but... Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird to me. It's weird to me, the thought process behind this. And my only thought is that it's been just so ingrained through generations and their family that mm -hmm. they just can't see like the thought of it not being this scares the shit out of them. Yeah. Right. Like they could just not think outside these terms. Yeah. Also probably because, uh, if they did, then they'd feel completely isolated from a community that they've been in for so mm -hmm. long. Well, and if climate change is being caused by human actions, and is going to make the world a less inhabitable place, a less compatible place for human civilization. Right. That is terrifying. Yeah, so who are you going to blame it on? If this is all caused by sin and is signs that the world is about to end, then it's all under control and they're going to get to go to heaven and not have to live in a less compatible for civilization world. Right, so it's also the fear of dying. It's a it's a more palatable thought mm -hmm. behind 
when you're going to die. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And we've had that conversation oh, yeah. before. Um, it's easier for people, yeah. again, to have some quote unquote hope. Mm-hmm. But then that makes you a shitty person on the life that really counts. You're here right now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, it is time for a break, and then we'll be back with Crystal Moore to talk about the Exmo community. I found out, and I should have known this from things I'd heard before, the ex-Mormon community is as weird as the Mormons' church. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah. I can confirm that. Because simultaneously, <laughs> I was getting messages from you directly about a particular story involving ex-Mormons that we will not go into, no. while also getting comments from Dan Ellis, one of the hosts of Godless Revolution out of Utah, who is an ex-Mormon. <laughs> so both Boise and Utah ex-Mormons uh -huh. talking to me at the same time about the same thing because the ex-Mormons talked about a thing <laughs> behind <Yeah>. the scenes. <laughs> we, we are always talking about a thing, thing behind the scenes. <laughs> the, we are just as active as ex-Mormons. <laughs> I have found out. Uh, wow. I wasn't, I was, uh, I was a, uh, I was always a Jack Mormon. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so I, I wasn't very active growing up and my family, like my parents and, and all weren't either. So, you know, when I, when I left and I, I sort of left it all behind, I didn't really think much of other ex members coming out. And it wasn't until, um, I, I met enough comedians who happened to be ex Mormon <laughs> that I thought, well, this is, that's kind of weird. There's a lot of us. It's a, uh, it's maybe there's a few more in the area. I wonder if we could do a show. So, yeah. so that sort of evolved into what that is, but in the process of doing that and, and, you know, going to, who do I advertise the show to? Obviously ex Mormons. Uh, I, I, I got onto, I got onto Reddit and just searched ex Mormon mm -hmm. for the first time Ugh. two years ago. And at that time there were, 61,000 recovering Mormons, it says. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> and I was, oh, my God. I didn't realize I'd been out for 12 years, so I had no clue there were that many people. Mm -hmm. There's 100,000 on Reddit today, so that number just keeps jumping. That's I because they keep converting people and then people are like oh shit what did i get myself into <laughs> well, and, and they keep out. having tons and tons of babies and then those babies grow up and leave right. the church exactly yeah no it's it's a really hot time for a lot of people it's a hot time for ex-mormons right now <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting it's hot it's mm. really exciting a lot of things are happening um you know, so yeah, I didn't know until just two years ago how how active a community that was and and it was um, you know, on one side, really a relief because I didn't realize there were a lot of things I hadn't talked mm -hmm. about and I had, just hadn't even thought of. And, and here's this whole group of people. I didn't know that that was a culture, mm. that that was a different culture I mm -hmm. grew up in right? because we weren't that good of Mormons. So I just never really considered myself a part of it and, and didn't realize that's what made me so weird outside of it is that I was a fucking Mormon <laughs> and right. I didn't, I didn't know I was still a Mormon mm -hmm. because I didn't, I didn't realize that I had taken on that culture. That's the culture I grew up in. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and when I got into that little ex Mormon community, I'm like, Oh shit, this is a subculture mm -hmm. in America. And it is, it is very real. The like it, it and it's, it's, Unfortunately, this culture, uh, sub subculture, the ex Mormons, are all uh, in a process of somewhere in their own faith trauma, right? Somewhere in their own journey of of believing a thing is the truth, the truth, like the truth, and and realizing that it's not. Right. And I can't begin to explain how heartbreaking that is. Um. It, but it, it's 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 more to deal with than you even realize. Mm. Uh, I'm I still have little things come up at, today, twelve years later, and I know I've been to therapy. I've done all the work, 
every time I prepare for a show, it brings up new, new things and I have to deal with a lot of, oh, well, okay. That's, I didn't, wow, oh, that's still there. Right. Uh, you know, it really is such a, a subculture and they're all traumatized. I think that's why it's such a weird culture too, mm-hmm. is that they are all traumatized. We're right. all dealing right. with this huge faith trauma, <laughs> you, you know, and, and right. some of us are, are just at the point where we're like, it just doesn't work for me. So I'm just like, not going to go anymore. And some of us are at the point where we're like, burn it down. Burn, motherfucker. Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. It, that creates some real weird yeah. divisions right. in the community, yeah, you know, sure. real weird well, divisions. Yeah. And one thing is, that it's kind of interesting for me seeing it is that like I, I'm in the, the ex Adventist subreddit and a couple of ex Adventist groups on Facebook. They are not very active mm. because when you stop being an Adventist, it just means you can eat pork and you can drink and smoke. <laughs> and most uh, from a particular, well, not necessarily huge sample size. Basically, everybody starts drinking and smoking as soon as they leave the Adventist right. church. Same, same were, with the Mormons. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, they, and loving bacon. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are they still Christian? Do they still go to other Christian churches? Most or? don't. Okay. Um, some do. Most yeah. don't. And, but it's... The only thing that's really weird is bars feel strange and hmm. then you adapt because Adventists have always, their thing has always been you live in the world and you kind of want to adapt to the world that you're in. Uh, and so part of that yeah, is that. B- being very spread out across, you know, not having right. these large um, central communities. Granted, that those do still end up happening around yeah. colleges and hospitals and the like, but it results in you leave the church and you blend into society as quickly as you possibly can and try to leave it all oh. behind you. And it tends to work pretty, right. pretty easily. Right. For Mormons, it, that's not the case. Well, because no. you're so, you're so told, uh, you've been like all Mormons have been persecuted. So that's why you have to stick with all your Mormon friends. And then everything is just all around this group mentality and this religion. And I feel like, when you come out of it, it's like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Uh, this is not, this isn't the way it is anymore. And but then you still have that. We need to be a group. Yeah, yeah. There's type definitely a because the the church itself is very community, communal, family. You know, centers on that, and it's so well organized. Mm-hmm. I cannot stress enough how well organized the Mormon church is like the government and also schools could learn a lot. Oh yeah. From the, <laughs> from the structure right. of the Mormon church. Right. And with um, very few paid members. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Only the so, higher ups really. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, very few paid members. Um, so you, you just grow up with this set it's like you were born into um, kind of like this Pleasantville situation mm-hmm. of having a neighborhood, having a school right. friends, having a community that cares about you. And, and they do because those people are real people. The people that, that I grew up with in the Mormon church as a kid were real, nice, kind, lovely people. They still are today. They really do care about your birthday. They really do bring you nice things on those days. The The machine of it is already working. So if you have a community of kind, nice people, they're never going to look farther into it. There's not going to be any abuse. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a pretty nice right. upbringing, actually. You don't really realize the subtle ways that it's going <laughs> to mess with your head right. or your sexuality right. or, you know... <laughs> um, but but you you re- you you assume that everyone just has that you don't know that that's that's unique to mormonism right. that that was unique to your community right. being mostly mormon so you you kind of go out looking for those groups to belong to i think um without really realizing that that's what you're doing there's a lot of <laughs> floating Mm -hmm. about trying to find what, okay, well, what group do I belong in now? Um, Because you really do need that community. Mm -hmm. That's the culture. Mm -hmm. The other thing um, 
that makes you weird when you come out is that you don't realize all the little colloquialisms that are Mormon, all the terminology, all the just little things, how you dress, the way you wear your hair, all these like subtle social things that you, that you just assume are normal. That's the way people are. And, and me Mm -hmm. not realizing that that was my Mormonism showing Mm -hmm. because I'm not Mormon anymore. Right. but I didn't know that that was a culture in and of itself, you, yeah. you know, until I found the ex Mormons and then realized, yeah. Oh, right. This is a much, okay. Yeah. That it just made sense. Like, Oh, we're all, I say funeral potatoes. Everyone knows oh, what yeah, I'm talking about. Potatoes. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, and we all understand that when I say you get a little bit excited when somebody dies, cause then you get <laughs> you, food, you know what I'm saying, uh-huh. but, but people rally around you too. Oh my gosh. Yeah, when yeah. When someone dies, I I was going to so say, supportive. I didn't realize. <laughs> so I've been on the show and I'm the, I'm the convert, right? But I also moved to Idaho never knowing what a Mormon was. I moved from Colorado, got here, and then all I moved to central Mormon area <laughs> in Boise. And that was everybody went, everybody knew each other. Everybody had known each other. Everybody was Mormon. Everybody did all these things. And so I always felt awkward and like I didn't fit in. And so the easiest thing for me to do was start to slowly change into a Mormon. And then I got a Mormon boyfriend and then it was all the food. I swear it's all the food. <laughs> the food is what caught me, you know, they like have the comfort. Oh God, the comfort. comfort food. Yes, exactly. And then it just was like, oh, well, do you want to hear a little bit more about this? And it's like, sure, I'm hanging out here anyway. Well, like, why not? And then I am a, oh God, if I'm going to start something, I'm going to put 100% behind it. (laughs) I did not realize um, until I started writing my set, uh, how fucked up, (laughs) how fucked up that I was. I told you too. I told, I tell all the comedians when they agree to be on the show, if they haven't been on the show before, I tell them you are going to be digging up some deep, deep deep psychological shit that you don't know you have yet (laughs) you have not dealt with so just come over and have coffee with me we'll talk about it my door is always open yeah because i've had someone drop out of every show and had to call someone right someone else to come in last minute and you know fill in it is a it leaves a lot of baggage behind Mm -hmm. even if you convert right exactly and i'm like oh my gosh uh, but it, I mean, they had a piece of my life from nine years old till <laughs> I left Idaho, which was at 19. So 10 years, like, and I was only, I went to church for two years and only was officially Mormon for about six months. And then, I mean, here's what happened. Like I was going to church with my boyfriend's family. That was not actually my ward. But they were the ones who were like, hey, this is great. Uh, and they ra- rallied yeah. around me and all this stuff. But as soon as you become a member, they're like, you got to go to your, oh, own, you gotta ward. Go to your own ward. And so no one knew me. And I stopped going because I was like, <laughs> oh, God, they don't know me. And they weren't nice to me. Yeah, they weren't yeah. welcoming. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is the worst. Because <laughs> you're just another regular yeah. Mormon like they are. Exactly. They're like, who are you? Mm-hmm. which then it was sad. And so I was like, well, I don't get these warm That's fuzzies a anymore. Big, big issue that gets talked about um, in the forums on Reddit, in the groups we have, we have private Facebook groups. Right, so we course. can share things without mm-hmm. our family. <laughs> Right. Who is Mormon? Right. Like it's that's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. It, like you have to answer several questions before they. Oh yeah. But in the group because it th- that could be disastrous to people's whole families. It's terrible. But um, you know that's one of the things that gets talked about a lot, especially with the you know the converts mm-hmm. that they they joined because they felt you know really loved and included and and everyone just. Like they moved to this place and just everyone was so nice and so friendly and and they were just great. And as soon as they, you know, all become, you know, join up and become Mormon, then that just melts away. And I, you know, it, 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 it's more disappointing at the end, you know, they're like, oh, it was, it was all fake. And right. It's like, yeah, yeah. 
And Sorry, I, it was. <laughs> and I went back um, after I moved to, I, w- I had to move to Seattle with my parents. And my parents then were like, maybe you should, maybe you should go back to church. And so I actually went to church. I went to the Mormon church um, in the poorest area of Seattle. Surprise. Yep. Oh. Yep. In White Center. That's where the hmm. projects are quote unquote of Seattle, right? Like the Mormon that, but that's where section, of Seattle. Yeah. So that's where the section eight housing is around in that yeah. area. And so, uh, so then I got to see Mormons that I had never. So then the interesting thing, and I don't know, I, I don't want to say nice, but it was better to go there because half the people were converts anyway. Oh, that's interesting. And so then it was nice and, and I was included and I went to young adults and I was going to dance. So it really makes a huge all that. difference yeah. what that community itself really right. is. Because I, I didn't dislike the people I went to church with. They were, they were lovely people. Mm-hmm. There were a few girls that were, you Not? know, snobby. <laughs> yeah. But right. overall it was a pleasant experience what i had a hard time with always growing up in the church was was the dogma Mm -hmm. and and the and the rules and and feeling like well i'm not really free um and and those were the things that i i was always questioning it's no surprise it didn't take me very long to find my way my way out of there because i was trying to poke holes in the Mm -hmm. argument right all along But at the same time, hoping, hoping that this thing that my, my parents have, have given me is, is true. Cause that would be really fucked up if it wasn't. (laughs) And it is, it was, it feels terrible. You're like, Oh, my parents are idiots. Yeah. They raised (laughs) us in a cult. Yeah. That's great. I thought, "Mm, yeah, nope. I think uh, I might still be more, if I had stayed in Seattle and not joined the Navy, I more than likely would I could have see gotten that. married. I could see that. And, you totally would have been just Mormon, gone. But I went into the Navy and then it just kind of fell away. But if I had stayed in Seattle, oh, I was like straight up into like single. Well, you don't ward. see too many um, military, active military duty no. um, people that are Mormons. It's too hard. It's too hard to do that because like. You can't do both. You no, know, you, you really can't. You can't devote that much to Mm-mm. both. No, uh, because you rarely get a Sunday. Time. Yeah, you rarely get a Sunday off. And if you did, like, do you want to dedicate three hours to something like another thing? You would really have to be very devout. And I just did not have that, that drive to Mm. do that. And so, Mm. hey, military, even though I jumped into another fucked up thing and had some other stuff happen, it saved me from being a Mormon. That's that's a lot. (laughs) It is a lot. I mean, I just laugh about it. Because you didn't, uh, you didn't join in a way that you were like convicted. This is the truth. It was like this is this, this feels good. okay. No, it felt great, and I, and I actually I always wonder because like I I I started to believe, and this is probably just me and my mental illness. No, I'm curious. I don't this know. It was just like. It was Easter Sunday and then I just got this like warm, loving feeling and it just felt so good. And when then I they started tell you all along, uh-huh. that's what you're looking yep. for. That's the confirmation. Exactly. So when you've already had that planted yep. in there for so long. Yeah. For real. Any warm, comfortable feeling I get immediately evokes a, a, a mental <gasps> yeah. thought process right. that is like sort of a stamp of approval or, or this is well, that's this the Holy is good. Spirit. This is right. And yeah. I'm so far out, but it's still, still, it doesn't matter what's giving me a warm, comfortable feeling. If I get an overwhelming, warm, comfortable feeling, I'm like, this is some fucking real shit. I'm going to change my, what do I need to do right now? Let's make some plans. Right. Exactly. And so that was the whole thing right now. And that was the whole thing there. They want you. That was a thing. You're going to feel it. The the spirit is going to come into you and your confirmation is going to feel so good. And you're going to feel like you've been wrapped up in this warm blanket and you're going to feel so elated almost like this feeling. And I was just sitting there and it was probably because I was just around a bunch of happy people. No, for real. <laughs> and picking for that real. up. And then all of a sudden it was Easter Sunday and I'm sitting in young women's and all of a sudden I get this and I just start bawling and people are like, what's happening? And I was like, I know 
it's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's happened. Oh, it's wow. happened. Oh, and you I have know to it's tell true. that story on the Mormon mishaps when we get yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, for that's, sure. Because that's great. That yeah. is a Mormon mishap. Yeah. And then I was like, 100, I'm in this. <laughs> like, and I'm gonna be such a fucking good wife. <laughs> you, you do. Know? You get like, like yeah, it's very competitive get, religion. Right. I'm. I'm very gonna competitive. Do this. But the funny thing is, I was a little backwards. Because I was like, for sure, I'm still going to go to school. And my boyfriend was not very good in school and wasn't really school motivated. And I still wanted a career. So he was going to be like, yeah, he's the stay at home dad. dad. Yeah. He's like, I'll be the stay at home dad. Yeah. And I was like, perfect. I'm going to go. I'm going to get my degree. I'm going to support us. You're going to stay at home with the kids. And this is going to be great. We're going to be unconventional Mormons, but still super awesome. Oh, that is just a Mormon wet dream, isn't it? Oh my <laughs> no. God. And then it's like, and then he left for his mission. Because you really want, yeah. it's very, it's very competitive, very like pride centric. There's yeah. thing you want to achieve shit. You want to get to the top of that goddamn oh God, pyramid because, and shine yes. like a goddamn star. Because there's levels. There's level. You want to, I want to be on top. I wanted to be in the, uh, you know, I want to be the young women's president. Couldn't be because I wasn't baptized they were going to give me secretary though oh that's nice but they couldn't because i wasn't a member and they told me though we would give this to you if you were but then as soon as i got baptized they were like no now you have to go to this other thing and it was like oh my god i have to compete all over again it was like so defeating for real i would hate being and then it was like oh god i have to start on the bottom again and try to convince all these people it was exhausting it is exhausting. Yeah. It's exhausting. I Being like a Mormon is up. exhausting. Okay, so normal churches, what they do <laughs> is... Like, let me tell you about The this. non-cult churches? Right. They're just regular churches? I, I, I find the term cult problematic when you're talking about a large organization yeah. because it, it's... You know, it's one thing when it's, it's a, real, a small... It's grown so big, we can't call it a cult anymore. <laughs> you could in and the 1800s. Standard, yeah. Christian, yeah. standard Christianity is a, a, a death cult. Okay. All right. It, it's a term that, that I I find all you, religions are cults if there's enough organization and people behind it. But so, strings. so right, you're more yeah. you're more conventional uh, Christian organization. What they gotcha. do is they they hire people to be the good Christians that are the competitive, trying to be the best Christian possible, mm-hmm. and they pay them money, and that way all they have to do is show up for church, and if they have the misfortune of being selected for a church office, then they have some extra stuff they have to do. Oh, they don't want to be elected? Most don't want to be. Oh, that's not the way that it is in the Mormon church. You want to no. be elected. No. Oh, yeah. because then God is telling God everybody. God has chosen you yes. as the young women's Maya maid <laughs> secretary, right. okay? You're going to serve with pride and then, dignity. Because then you're exalted over everybody else in the group. Mm-hmm. Because, oh, wow. Because... All three of them. Right. Because they... <laughs> well, no. And it's a higher... Because, some, because God has told whoever picks it has specifically chosen you. Yeah, everything is very word of God anointed. Everyone's anointed for the position that they are, which is exactly why they get into the issues that arose with the story that we were talking about Mm -hmm. um, on a larger scale because you believe that bishop is anointed by God and Mm -hmm. he you know, that God is going to, obviously you don't think he knows everything about your life, but you, you believe that when you talk to him, God is going to fill him with just what you need out of him. Right. And that's, so when you accept whatever he gives you back Mm -hmm. as exactly what God needs to give you, right. That's what, that's what you were supposed to, that's what you need. Right. So if that's, um, you know, talking to you about what you are wearing or mm. your motivations in this sin or why you were there or, you know, any number of things that this well-meaning yeah. most yeah. of the time. Right. Old man who just doesn't know you or this boy you're talking about uh-huh. or what's even going on in the day. uh you know they they can do so much damage yeah. yeah and and not even not even know cuz they mean well and right. you mean well 
like I look back now and I'm like, I took I took a ride in my bishop's Porsche when he first got it by myself. He's like, come on, Aaron, let's just do this. And looking back at it, I'm like, wait, whoa, whoa, hold on. I was in high school oh. and this man was like, come on, Aaron. And of course, I'm like, this is a bishop. Uh-huh. Oh my God. He, and he was attractive and he was a little younger and it was like, mm. Oh my gosh, uh, I'm in favor with this person who's at higher power. And he's telling me how good I am at everything. And now looking back, I'm like, Oh my God, that's so creepy. Like Ryan. what the fuck? How, oh my God. And I wasn't telling my parents anything. They just thought I was at church stuff. Like I could only imagine if I was like, Hey, my Bishop had me drive in a Porsche, by." Just the two of us. He just wanted to take the two of us out for a drive. And it's not like he did anything. Yeah. Like there was no touching or anything like that. But now looking at it's it, an, like, it's an inappropriate ooh, it's, thing. It for was us. inappropriate. No, and, but if you, you comp- another comparison between Mormons and, and more conventional churches yeah. to become a pastor in almost in most, at least the mainstream and often a lot of the evangelical denominations as well. It's four years studying yeah. doing ministerial education at the undergraduate level, then a th- three years working on the Master of Divinity in the seminary, seven years of training, three years of on jo- on-the-job training, typically under supervision before you get an ordination. Um, it-, it varies from denomination to denomination. It's literally full-time for a decade mm-hmm. to really... Well, you go to school... Yeah, right? like you for go, seven years. Right, you go to school. This is not the way it is with for bishops. Mormons. It's no. Hey, just you've been some called random guy random with yeah. no guy training. Who an auto body shop. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> and everyone up to a certain point is like that until you get into the more corporate higher hierarchy and the and the corporate structure. Mm-hmm. At that point, then um, you know those are paid positions. Those are, but still don't have the tr- the training. It's yeah, no. volunteer experience to get into the paid position. Well, it's uh, who's who's playing the game the way we're playing yeah. the yeah. game. That's how you get yeah. invited into that game. Yep. Oh, and I love games. I think that's why I loved it, too, because I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's the whole yeah. military, too. As that's long as you can play the game. Is the games. I yeah. was like, fuck you guys and your games all the time. I was I like, I'm it. really good at these I'm games. I'm this person when everybody's <laughs> playing games. <laughs> I'm so good at this. Oh, but the the, the other I'm thing not. was with because I I did I did the the bachelor's in theology and oh wow three out of six semesters at the seminary so almost halfway through <laughs> and yeah, yeah. it was amazing how much of our classes how many classes there were and multiple classes uh, basically the whole point of it was how to not fuck up your church members right oh that's nice that's a nice. <laughs> That's a nice thing. I mean, there's still going to be people who are right. obviously in power and a little bit fanatical and who are going to fuck up people, obviously. They're in every But when you have when you it. have the power the dynamic. The fact that you even have it as a as a lesson to right. be taught recognizes that as a whole organization, yeah. uh-huh. uh, secular Christianity, we'll just call it, just the regular non-denominational Christianity, I, I think throughout history recognizes when they're um, doing things that are damaging mm-hmm. and then does work to correct those right. things. Um, not always as good or effectively as you might hope that they could correct those things, right. but they are recognizing uh, those things are issues mm-hmm. uh, and, and trying to ha- having a whole class that's just, how to not fuck up your, how to not mess up <laughs> your congregation, you know, psychologically yeah. your oh, yeah. congregation. That's really important. Why yeah. is that not a class for anyone who's mm. going to be a, a, a leader in any way? Right. How to not fuck up the people following you. How <laughs> right. to, how to yeah. influence in a way that is mm-hmm. conscionable. Right. You know, like, yes. That particular class involved, here's, Here's where you're qualified to help people. Mm-hmm. And here's the point where you need to refer them to an actual mental health professional to get help. That's great. Oh my God. Also, that sounds amazing. Here's how to cut down on the chances of the woman you're doing pastoral counseling with falling in love with you and hitting on you. <laughs> well, no, of that's course important. they're going to put that It's yeah, important yeah, yeah, yeah. to yeah. protect yeah. against that right, because right, it right, will right. happen. Right. Mormon bishops don't get any of that training. No. So no. when it happens, 
the, all they have is 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 shame and guilt for <gasps> yes. the, yeah. the yep. feeling even being there. I was just going to rising yeah. naturally, and then both parties get to deal with that yep. shame and guilt mm-hmm. while they're trying to counsel on something right. that he's not equipped to. It's right. He's an it's account- absolutely mental. He, he's an insurance salesman. Yeah, or <laughs> right, like or the yeah. or the or county he, coroner, right, or, or or he he owns an auto mall, like. <laughs> Like, what is he, what is he, uh, yeah, he wasn't ever taught how to be like, oh shit, uh, you're having some real existential crisis. And of course this woman's probably like, I'm just looking for some love. Yeah. And like, now you're giving me this attention and now I'm going to fall in love with you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then they're just like, what did I do? And then they're like, what did I do to make them think that, oh my God, I'm a horrible person. Yeah, right. and also, shame, shame, guilt, you know, guilt. any attraction they're feeling, right, it, it, it re- reciprocated mm-hmm. is is completely shameful as well. That's probably, I think, the most for me, for my personal opinion, I think that's the most damaging thing about Mormonism or any uh, Christian cult or religion that is that is so hard on with the rules. Just mm-hmm. is the shame that's attached to right. the breaking those right. rules mm-hmm. or not being yeah. the same as everybody right. else or, or struggling yeah. with these things. Like there's an illusion of this forgiveness. There's an illusion that y- it'll all be sorted mm-hmm. in the afterlife, but that doesn't, that, that doesn't take away from the very real feeling of constant shame mm-hmm. and, and guilt right. and, and dread of, 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 wanting to masturbate because everybody yes. does right because it's yes and you're feeling it and you're like how do i shut off that feeling to want to yeah do this? yeah oh my god i must not be good i must not be a good christian oh god i must not you know like now i gotta pray harder and oh gosh it's not going away so i gotta yeah. keep doing it. it's like uh i mean that's the whole basis around scientology too right besides the science fiction stuff is to to mm-hmm. basically uh have i mean the level up game playing oh yeah and then uh having you confess everything Mm -hmm. and then the shame and the guilt behind it and then the and the blackmailing basically because they then they blackmail your then they blackmail their members of being like well remember this thing that you wrote and you said do you want that to get out no you don't when when you when you when you look at it the short-lived cults rely on a, a charismatic leader uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, when yeah. the charismatic leader dies, the group fractures and dies. Mormons and Scientologists have both avoided that, by and large, by creating games to keep people mm-hmm. devoted in. Mm-hmm. And I think probably the safest way to put it would be Mormons are the LDS Church is the most mainstream of the cults. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Do you know what keeps those alive too? I think is lineage, as yeah. well, because like. When they I, they had a unique opportunity yeah. in the in America at the time that it was born. They went far enough west with a real big group of people. Mm-hmm. They killed mm-hmm. everyone in the area and they they bunkered down and they killed people that tried to come in mm-hmm. and they set up a, a legitimate theocratic rule. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A, a, a church state in this area. They were too big by the time that 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 could be stopped yeah that now it is a church right well it was they were big enough by the early 1860s that Mm -hmm. the troops that california raised to send off to the civil war got stopped in utah and had to put down the insurrection there Mm. Mm. it was that big and violent of a group that yeah california's division how right. to take care of it yeah yeah well the, uh, <laughs> that would have been about the times that that they were pulling off the mountain meadows massacre uh, and and mm-hmm. you know anybody trying to come through they were obliged to kill and they were happy to dress up like native americans to oh, do it God. to so, sow yeah. division right. um joseph smith i think was i think joseph smith drank his own kool-aid i think he was legitimately a a yeah. a bit of a crazy person mm-hmm. and, 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 ch- and charming and charismatic as well. Um, but it's in my opinion, Brigham young, that was the, 
mastermind mm-hmm. architect that allowed it to that 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 encouraged Joseph in the directions that he went that were more building an empire right. to yeah. the point that um when Joseph Smith died and and his wife and and her children uh his first wife um and 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 her children wanted to set up the church there this is you know mm-hmm. they in their minds a prophet is a lot like a king and it's passed down through lineage so she expects one of her children right. to be the next prophet mm. J- brigham young had it brought so many of the group in already mm-hmm. especially the higher ups that are organizing things that are right. building things that are buying right. printing presses and and our lawyers and you know powerful yeah. people yeah. that that he brought in that he could take with him that direction and they knew what they were doing they were setting up a a church state mm-hmm. s- similar to ISIS today yeah um didn't wasn't his wife uh is her name Anna Joseph Smith's yeah Emma Emma and then she she went back to the Midwest, right? Well, yeah, she stayed. She never oh, came okay. to Utah. Oh, she never she came. She stayed there. Yeah. There's a whole. Isn't uh, there a whole thing about how Brigham Young hated her? Yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> he did. Well, and she hated him. There's yeah. a whole other sect of um, RLDS in mm. Missouri area that believe, like I think, the prophet of the Salt Lake what we know of as LDS church today mm-hmm. will probably never make that call. Like, Hey everybody, let's all go to Adam on Diamond and uh, bunker down because they would be surrounded by those RLDS, which is those guys don't get talked about. They're polygamous yeah. too. Oh, they are. Yeah. Well, yeah, I thought she didn't like polygamy for some reason. Emma. No, but it didn't. If all the other men are already practicing mm, that, that's true. Yeah. I should double check that to make sure mm, I want to okay. make sure that that's I'm not certain on on where the RLDS church that, back there, but they are right. still back there. Yeah. And, the and RL- they believe they have the lineage of prophecy. That's what I was going to ask. So they mm. they believe they have the true one because of Joseph Smith. OK, so yeah. kind of mm-hmm. like Shia and Sunni Islam. Oh. Yeah, one group, very similar. One group believes they have the just have the, the latest leaders and the other group believes mm-hmm. they have the lineage of leadership. Right. Yeah. Yeah. From very similar. Yeah. Very right. similar. Wow. Um, huh. Yeah. And then there's a whole nother, you've got the ones down in Southern Utah, Arizona. The FLDS. Yeah. That's different. That's from the, you know, the ones that came with Brigham Young out to Utah and, and were fully in that 100% mm-hmm. involved in that. Um, but the federal government of the United States of America said, uh, we won't let you be a state if you're polygamous. And they said, okay, we're, we're not, not polygamous, polygamous anymore. <laughs> but then the FLDS, uh, but the was, FLDS like, was like, mm-hmm. uh, no, that's an eternal principle. So they broke away. So you sort of got three flavors of Mormon in, in, in the United States. And, um, it's just the LDS who are, or the church, the church, the now, church, right? The church who is now like the most favorable. Well, I mean, yeah. They're the they most knew, digestible they, to the public. Right. And they, they knew at that time, like the only way that we're going to keep building is if we play, if we play this game with the government. Yeah. Yeah. They've been, they've been appointing, I think, um, business clever mm-hmm. type men to run the church since that, since yeah. that change. Right. Um, because I mean, they are so incredibly wealthy. It's not even funny. Oh yeah. (laughs) So incredibly wealthy. Um, very, very powerful church financially. And, and I think it's one of the, it has the potential to do the most, um, gather the most people because Mm -hmm. as they keep sugarcoating it, as they keep whitewashing it and cleaning up the distasteful things like spirit babies being uh unworthy and so now they're born black or handicapped or whatever 
uh, a woman. <laughs> uh, uh, we, as they start cleaning all of those things up and time between those things gets greater. I I think if, if they're not, this is just my opinion, but if they're not sort of discovered now and really reduced in size right now, mm-hmm. they have the potential to be uh, a, a real powerful political force in, in the country. Well, they um, are. A little bit, right? I mean, they, they the are Prop in Utah thing, and in California because that Prop Eight yeah. thing happened, and that was all backed by wealthy Mormons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, yeah. they're definitely a political force in the West. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah. But I don't think there's enough all around that. Not no, as, no. But right that's now. what I'm saying. Yeah, I think if they yeah, keep yeah, whitewashing right. this right. and they keep sugarcoating mm-hmm. the church and they keep presenting it in this. Right. Super shiny yeah. kind of way yeah. that isn't that isn't very offensive, that feels pretty feels pretty nice. You go and yeah. if if they keep building that, they can I think definitely right. bring in more more yeah. people and become a bigger right. political force and that's Well, they're great in their philanthropy around here and everywhere <laughs> else, right? I mean, you don't have to be a member to get a mm. vacuum cleaner from them or to get food from them. You don't have to be a member and they'll help you out. Very charitable, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, even the the missionaries will come over. You, they, you don't even have to talk to them about Mormonism, and they'll clean your gutters for you. Hmm. All right. I mean, these are all... I did look up the RLDS. Mm-hmm. Um, they are now known as the Community of Christ. Mm-hmm. And they mm-hmm. claim that they have never sanctioned polygamy. <gasps> That's what I thought. I, okay, uh, yeah. okay, yeah. Because she was adamantly against it the entire time. Yeah. The entire time. That would have, that's really interesting. What just played out was my Mormon upbringing perspective of, of yeah. Emma. <laughs> and that's, you know, I yeah. haven't gone and looked too much into her. And I, <laughs> but just oh, as a, like yeah. from a natural place, I assume the the story that was already given to me, even though I've already disproved that story, that's mm-hmm. just interesting how those things right. root in there yeah. subtly. Thank you for correcting. That's that's great because I yeah she was very against it the entire time. And when I discovered that, um, in in my journey out of the church, it was one of the things that was, um, disturbing to to learn because you feel naturally like that's gross and it's hard to it's a hard pill to swallow. That's one of the hard pills to swallow, mm-hmm. right? So when when it's couched <laughs> like you know, she was convinced of the, you know, God's word of it. Then, then right. you sort of let that initial gross feeling wear yeah. away. And you've just attributed this acceptance of it to her. That is completely false. Right. Without even realizing, without even realizing hmm. Hmm. crazy. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. So that wraps it up for this week. Uh, since we're on vacation and this is all pre-recorded, there's no new feedback and no new patrons. But if you'd like to support the show, you can find out how at atheistnomads.com slash donate. And if you want to contact us, you can send us an email at contact at atheistnomads.com or go to atheistnomads.com slash speakpipe and leave us a voice message or even just record something and email it to us. That works out plenty easy as well. Next week, we'll have an interview. So until then, remember, not all those who wander are lost. Thank you for listening to another episode of Atheist Nomads. You can find show notes and contact information at atheistnomads.com. Follow us on Twitter at Atheist Nomads and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Atheist Nomads. Please subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcatcher of choice. And while you're there, feel free to leave us a review. Theme music is courtesy of Sturdy Fred. Until next time, this has been The Atheist Nomads.